Welcome to Team 1114's Kitbot on Steroids instructional video. This video will show you all the steps to put together your own Kitbot on Steroids. The Kitbot on Steroids was designed by Team 1114 to provide a simple and inexpensive drivetrain for teams to use that is both robust and highly effective. Over the years, many teams have used this style of drivetrain with amazing successes, including numerous regional winners. The best part of this drivetrain is that it's very simple to assemble, allowing you to spend more of your build season working on mechanism design, programming, and practice. Also, its simplicity and robust nature ensures this drivetrain will keep running all season long with minimal amount of maintenance. For more information on the Kitbot on steroids, check out symbotics.org slash kitbot. There you will find a bill of materials, written instructions, and a CAD model that you can use to incorporate into your robot design. If you have any questions or want to be updated about the Kitbot on steroids or other Team 1114 projects, you can like our Facebook page or follow us on Twitter at FRC1114. Also, if you are an iPhone or iPad user, you can download our iOS app, which includes a full series of FRC workshops and tutorials on a wide range of topics, including the Kitbot on steroids. For this part, you will need four C-channel rails, four corner connectors, 16 quarter 20 socket head bolts, 16 quarter 20 nylock nuts, a 3 16th inch Allen key, a 7 16th inch wrench, a hacksaw, and a file. The first thing you will need to do is take two of the C-channel rails and cut them along the 8th inch guide holes. After cutting, you may want to file the edges. While assembling the rails, ensure that the center drop holes are downwards. Now, attach the corner connectors to the 4th and 5th holes in the cut C-channel rails using the quarter 20 bolts and nuts. Be sure to have the connectors positioned as shown. Then, attach the full length C-channel rails to the connectors at their ends with the channel's flanges facing outwards. Now we can tread our wheels. You will need plaction wheels, your chosen tread, 8th inch rivets, an 8th inch drill bit, a drill, and a rivet gun. First, you will need to wrap your wheels with tread, ensuring that they are the right length. Before beginning, you may need to cut your treads to size if you haven't purchased pre-cut treads. Next, drill your first hole through the tread and wheel. Now, take a rivet and push it through the tread and the wheel, applying firm pressure as you pop the rivet. Other methods may be used for applying tread, but this is our recommended method, which should work for treading most wheels. Next, apply a second rivet right next to the first one. Tightly wrap the tread around the wheels to ensure there are no bubbles. Apply a few rivets around the wheel until you reach the end, then apply another set of two rivets there. We will now assemble one of the wheels. You will need two 3 8 inch bearings, two sprockets of your chosen tooth count, three or six 2 and a half inch 1032 bolts, 1032 nuts, 0.55 inch sprocket spacer, an allen key for the bolts, 
532nd inch if using 1032 socket heads, 3 8 inch wrench, blocks of wood, and a hammer. Take one of the 3 8 bearings and place it in the wheel's bearing hole. Then, take a block of wood, place it over the bearing, and hammer it to finish pressing in the bearing. Then, flip over the wheel, placing it on a second block of wood, and press in the other bearing. The wooden blocks help to ensure that the bearings are not damaged. Alternatively, you may use an arbor press if available. Now, place on one of the sprockets and put the bolts through the wheels. The first sprocket on the wheel must have at least a 1 and 8 inch bore. Next, place on the sprocket spacer, then the second sprocket. Lastly, apply nuts to the bolts using your allen key and wrench. If using the hex nut holes in your plaction wheels, you'll only need an allen key, but be sure not to over tighten. You will need two wheels assembled like this, and another four wheels using one and three quarter inch 1032 bolts instead of two and a half inch 1032 bolts. Also, you will not need a sprocket spacer or a second sprocket. Now we will attach the wheels and outer rails to the chassis. You will need the already assembled frame, the two remaining C-channel rails, four corner connectors, all six wheels, six 7 inch 3816 bolts, six 3816 nuts, six 1.86 inch spacers, six 2.5 inch spacers, 16 quarter 20 socket head bolts, 16 quarter 20 nylock nuts, a 3 16 inch allen key, a 7 16 inch wrench, and two 9 16 inch wrenches. Again, remember that while assembling the rails, ensure that the center drop holes are downwards. Take one of the C-channel rails, two of the outer wheels, one of the center wheels, three of the 3 8 inch bolts, three 1.86 inch spacers, and three 2 and a half inch spacers. Begin by placing one of the 3 8 inch bolts in one of the appropriate holes. Then place one of the 1.86 inch spacers on first. Next place one wheel on, then a 2 and a half inch spacer. Repeat this for the other two locations. Ensure the center wheels are the ones with two sprockets. Now take this rail with the wheels, the rest of the already assembled chassis, three 3 8 16 nuts, two corner connectors, eight quarter 20 socket head bolts, eight quarter 20 nuts. First, take the corner connectors and bolt them in the outermost holes of the rail. Take the rail and align the corner connectors with the rest of the frame and 3 8 inch bolts with their opposite holes. Finish bolting the corner connectors to the frame. Next, apply the 3 8 16 nuts to the end of the axle bolts. Tighten the axle bolts with the two 9 16 inch wrenches, ensuring that they are not too loose or too tight. They must be able to spin freely. Repeat these steps for the other side. You can now see how there's a drop on the center wheel. Now you will need the assembled chassis, a wooden baseboard for which a simple drawing can be found on our website, eight 1032 or quarter 20 nuts, bolts and washers, and the appropriate allen key and wrench for your nuts and bolts. Now align your baseboard with the bottom of the chassis and bolt it on the eight locations. We will now begin to attach the chains. You will need a roll of number 35 chain, number 35 master lengths, a chain brake, a chain tensioner, needle nose pliers, 
and slip joint pliers. First, you will need to wrap the chain around the two sprockets, finding the appropriate length to break it at. Then, you will break the chain. Wrap the chain back around the sprockets and tension the chain preparing to apply the master link. Insert the coupler into the ends of the chain, then place the plate over it. Then, place the spring clip over it and use a pair of needle nose pliers to secure it. To assemble our gearboxes, you will need plastic gearbox housing, flanged aluminum plate, output shaft, 3 8 inch bearing, half inch bearing, 56 tooth gear, grease, 4 quarter 20 socket head bolts and nuts. First we will start by taking the plastic housing and firmly pressing in the 3 8 inch bearing. Next, take the output shaft and place it in the bearing. Then slide on the large 56 tooth gear over the hex portion of the shaft. You should now grease the gear before you finish assembly. The gearbox comes with this little packet of grease. We strongly recommend you invest in more. Now generously apply the grease to the outside of the gear. Now take the flanged aluminum plate and press the half inch bearing in, ensuring that the bearing's flange is on the same side as the plate's flange. Now take the plate with the bearing and slide it over the output. Then align the plastic housing with the plate. Now take the nuts, placing them in the back of the housing and tighten the bolts into them. For each sim motor you will need a 2mm machine key, a 12 tooth pinion, an 8mm retaining ring, a 3 8 inch nut driver, and pliers. Now to apply the 12 tooth pinions to the sim motors, insert the machine key onto the sim motors keyway and slide the pinion gear into place. You may need to apply pressure to insert the machine key. Next, press the 8mm retaining ring onto the motor shaft with a 3 8 inch nut driver to keep the gear in place. Take the sim motor and insert the pinion through the hole in the housing. Bolt the motor in the mounting holes. Repeat this for all other motors. Now you will need the assembled gearboxes, a 12 tooth double sprocket, an 8th inch machine key, a 0.595 inch spacer, a 3 16th inch spacer, a quarter inch washer, a button head bolt, Loctite or other thread locking product, and a 5 32nd inch Allen key. Place the 0.595 inch spacer on the output shaft of the gearbox. Next, take the machine key and place it in the output shaft's keyway. Then slide the sprocket over the shaft and key. Next, place the 3 16th inch spacer at the end of the shaft. Take the button head bolt, place the washer over it, and apply Loctite. You will only need a small amount of Loctite for it to be effective. Here, we are using an excessive amount. 
Now tighten it into the end of the output shaft. Shown here is the finished gearbox assembly. Now it's time to attach our gearboxes. You will need the assembled gearbox, two 5 8 quarter 20 socket head bolts, two quarter inch washers, two quarter 20 nylock nuts, a 3 16th inch ball end allen key, and a 7 16th inch wrench. First, take the gearbox and position it between the center and back wheels. Then, take a bolt, washer, and nut and bolt down the gearbox. Be sure to keep it loose enough so that it can still slide freely. Next, attach an appropriate length of chain using the previously described method. Once the chain is on, you may pull the gearbox back to attach the second chain. For this next part we will need 0.5 inch cross hex extrusions, quarter 20 thread rule and screws, a hacksaw, a 3 8 inch wrench, and a half inch wrench. First, you'll need to cut the half inch cross hex extrusions down to 16 7 8 inch in length. You'll need to position the hex extrusions between the gearboxes. Bolt them in with the quarter 20 thread rolling screw using a 3 8 inch wrench or driver. Once both the hex bars are in, you may now position the gearboxes to remove as much slack as possible in the chain, and then tightly finish bolting them down. We hope you've enjoyed this video. For more information on the KitBot on steroids, check out symbotics.org slash kitbot. There you will find a bill of materials, written instructions, and a CAD model that you can use to incorporate into your robot design. If you have any questions or want to be updated about the KitBot on steroids or other Team 1114 projects, you can like our Facebook page or follow us on Twitter at FRC1114. Also, if you are an iPhone or iPad user, you can download our iOS app, which includes a full series of FRC workshops and tutorials on a wide range of topics, including the KitBot on steroids. Finally, thanks to everyone who made this video possible, including First Robotics Canada, General Motors of Canada, Innovation First International, and Vex Robotics.